Hi, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. Halloween's just around the corner, so I wanted to do a Halloween themed video. My first idea was to do a Slender Man themed design. However, I wasn't able to get Slender Man to look both elusive and menacing. So I decided to work on a different design based around the idea of creating a demon cat. A sort of evil, menacing cat. And that didn't go too well. So eventually I settled on this. This is the shatter or disintegration effect. And I actually came up with two versions. This is the version that I call the more extreme version. And this is the less extreme version. I think both of them are pretty much in keeping with the spirit of Halloween. Or should that be the spirits of Halloween? I think I prefer this one. If prefer is the right word. I did a bit more work on this one just using the dodge and burn tool and just added a bit more detail to it. But I'm going to show you how to make both of them. And uh, we're going to start off afresh so I might cut away now and we'll come back in a few moments. So we're going to start off with two images. The first one is a photograph. This one's black and white. You can use a color image if you want. And the second one is a texture. I'm using a concrete texture. And it's one that I chose because of these really strong lines running through it. We're going to use the displace filter. And I'm just going to run through the changes that I made to this image in order to use it as the displace texture. So this is the image that I actually used and the edits and the edits that I made involved reducing the amount of detail in this image whilst ret retaining the strong black lines running through the image. Also I greyed out quite a lot of the image so that it was as close as possible to mid grey and I softened the these dark lines without completely removing them. So we're going to start off with a surface blur. And I found for this image a radius of 11 and a threshold of around 82 or 83 did the job. The next thing was to just soften these lines and to darken them. So I'm going to choose filter, blur, Gaussian blur and I found a radius of about 5 was correct for this image and then we're going to fade that and because we're working with a black and white image I can choose darken or darker color they'll both do and what that does is that it darkens the image where it's already dark and also softens these bold lines that we've got running through the image finally I turned a lot of the image to mid gray so we are going to do that using a levels adjustment and to show you what I'm trying to do, this is the histogram. You get that by going to the window menu. And what I want to do is to bring the mountainous part of the histogram to the exact center. So that there is the exact center. And you can tell because it says 128 in the levels there. So that's 128. And that's the center. And I want to bring the mountainous part of the histogram, this area here right to 1 to 8 and we can do that using this slider, the grey slider I'm just going to move it to where I want the center of the histogram to be so as you can see that shifted everything to the left and if I now go to 1 to 8 around there you can see that we've got the, the, the mountainous part, the, the huge part of the histogram piling up around 1 to 8 and that gives us mid gray. Now the importance of this is that when you use the displace filter what happens is that anything which is black moves in one direction, anything which is white moves in the opposite direction and anything which is mid gray just stands still. So I want as much mid gray as possible inside of this image. Light areas will move one way, dark areas in another way and you'll see exactly how that plays out. I'm going to actually flatten this image now. So we're going to choose right. So I'm going to right click that layer 
choose flatten image and now I'm going to save this as the displacement map to do that just choose file save as and I've already done this I save this as this document there face shatter displace blurred I also saved the non blurred version which is the original version of this texture and that's face shatter displace we're going to actually use both and I'm just going to demonstrate what the difference is between these two I'm going to cancel out of there and I'm going to undo that flattening and what I'm going to do is to undo the changes that I made so we're back to the original texture and what I'm going to do is to get rid of this now because we don't need this now when you create your texture a few things are important so make sure it's black and white make sure that it's exactly the same size as your document and I'll run through a few of these essentials again right at the end of the video so what we now do is to make a duplicate copy of the background or the base image and I'm just doing this because I like to work non-destructively whenever possible I'm now going to apply the displace filter before I do that though I want to demonstrate how you can create that sort of distorted image that I called the extreme version in the final edits that I showed you we're going to go to filter liquify and we can use this tool here the forward warp tool to distort the image and you can distort the image so that you get a nice demonic scream happening inside of the image however I've already done this I saved that as a mesh and if I hit load last mesh you can see the distortion that I created in that image that I call the extreme version and this is before the distortion that's after the distortion what should I go for I'm gonna go for before the distortion but if you wanna make any distortion to this image make them now rather than later on so I'm gonna cancel out there and we'll work with the undistorted image what we now want to do is to apply the displace filter so that's filter distort displace the settings here are where you do your work this takes trial and error and after you get the right settings then everything's quite easy I found that 10 and 10 worked well stretch to fit repeat edge pixels the important thing for this particular image was that the texture that we just saved and the image that we're working on are exactly the same size so I'm gonna hit OK and now we're gonna to go to the original unblurred version and I'll show you what that does that distorts the image but it distorts it in a way that creates a lot of what I would call disintegration I don't really want disintegration I just want more a shattering effect so I'm gonna undo that and we'll apply the different version the blurred version and once again this distorts things but we don't get that sort of really speckly disintegration happening now if I come to the concrete texture turn that on and choose let's choose linear burn you'll be able to see that the texture integrates well with the image the image right now looks kinda of horrid but once we apply the texture on top of it it kinda of looks okay again but we've got the disintegration happening here we've got disintegration happening in other parts of the face we can increase the distortion by going to the base image again that's the image that we distorted and we can increase the distortion by reapplying the filter so you can see now the distortion is getting even more crazy and if I reapply it again control or command F on the keyboard you can see that we get even more extreme distortion I'm going to I'm actually going to undo that and we'll go ahead with this version and we're done just gonna alt drag the base image put it right at the top and put it on vivid light and as you can see we're done that's the that's the distorted image with the shatter effect and it's as simple as that the main thing that you'll find you need to do is to work on the texture make sure that the texture is exactly as it, as it needs to be to create the effect that you want and really that's where most of the effort is required I'm just gonna finish this off with a few flourishes let's take the pen tool and draw a shape around the eye let's just fill that in with black I'm going to make a copy of that just alt drag that over there just make sure that the other eye is covered 
And then we are going to feather that a little bit so that she gets that demonic look in her eyes. And now I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this one here. That's Control J. Give that a white fill. And then give that a black mask. That's Alt clicking on the mask icon. And then we can just use the brush tool to paint one of these speckly brushes. Let's choose Spatter 59. Reduce the size of that. And with a white foreground, I'm just going to paint on the mask. Just allow some of that white through. And give her a nice... demonic look and uh, I'm gonna change the colors increase the size of that and then what we can do is to stamp that to a new layer control alt shift and E and what we can do is to, here we can actually use the dodge and burn tool and what I found was that if you just use this tool you can highlight some areas for instance I found actually let's start off with burn tool. I'm just going to increase the size of that a little bit. Choose one of the speckled brushes and just work on that eye there just to give it a bit more of a transition. And then switch to the burn, switch to the dodge tool. Maybe give that eye a highlight. Make sure we're working on highlights. You can work with a low exposure, high exposure, whatever you want. Now she's looking nice and demonic. I also found when working with a really tiny brush, going over some of these lines here with the, with the dodge tool, maybe a higher exposure, that helped to bring out some of the detail associated with the texture. So now we're working with the image as a whole. Uh, make sure what you need to do is to do most of your intricate work with the base image and also with the texture first of all and then when you come to this image here you're kind of working on the composite image so you're looking at the image in its totality you can almost ignore the original images and just work with whatever you find here and basically you can add a little bit of detail whatever you whatever you want to achieve so that's basically it is very straightforward most of the effort is in getting that texture just right, blurring it, reducing the detail, uh, increasing the darkness, whatever you need to do to make sure that it works just right. The reason that I was so insistent on getting a mid-gray in this area here was because if we had white, the, 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 distortion, the distortion that we would have got inside of this layer here would have been extreme, would have had parts of the image moving in one direction, other parts moving in the op opposite direction, it would have looked horrible. So mid-gray was perfect for just keeping the distortion limited. The other thing is when you're working with the displace filter, you need to get certain things absolutely right. For this kind of effect, make sure you use a displace texture which is exactly the same size, down to the last pixel as the base image. Secondly, most people recommend the texture is black and white. And finally, when you save your texture, make sure that it is a flattened document. Get any of those wrong and the thing might not work as you expect it to. Finally, I uh, just need to mention that when you're working with Photoshop CS6, there is this thing that happens sometimes that when you try to crop the image, it doesn't crop. The default setting is to hide rather than to crop. So when you want to crop an image, you got to make sure that this thing is checked here. If you don't check that then what happens is that when you think you've cropped the image it's actually not cropped and as soon as you hit the crop tool you get the uncropped or hidden part of the image returning. The other thing to bear in mind is that Photoshop CS6 is just weird and it doesn't crop even some, sometimes even when you've got this thing here uh, selected you get parts of the image not cropping properly. I found that saving the image and then reopening it was a good good way of actually fixing that finally another thing to bear in mind smart objects don't crop so rasterize your smart objects before you do your cropping and uh, you shouldn't have too many problems this displace filter is very very powerful but it does take a bit of time to get the texture right and to find out what the correct settings should be so have fun I hope you found that useful 
Um, it's a technique that I enjoy using. Um, thanks for watching. Take care. Till next time. Bye.